Off to part nine. Continuing with The Hunger, Buster Rye left the body of Mary Beth in his shack as he went out hunting for some deer. After walking forever and ever into the forest, he came to a clearing where he typically hunts. He was getting hungry. He realized, well, a can of beans isn't going to satisfy this old chap. I got to get some meat in me. So he began wandering through the woods where he typically has gone. And as he dragged his feet through the underbrush of this woods, forest, clearing, reprod. Without warning, something snapped over his leg. Boom! Bear trap. As the metallic inner workings of spikes went through his calf and leg, he fell to the ground in agony. With a few moments of panicking and screaming and agony, he passed out in pain. So when Buster Rye came to after passing out from pain, it had grown dark out and very cold. The winds began whipping around him and he realized pretty quick, I need to get myself out of this trap. I got to get to safety. This is, this is not good. He was in excruciatingly amounts of pain. His, the bones in his leg and ligaments and everything was exposed and blood was everywhere. And as the temperature was dropping and the winds were building, he needed to get to shelter and safety and address these wounds. He had his PPU stick and his, his bags nearby, so he hugged the rifle to him as he heard something creeping in the woods. He let the thoughts and you know, dark images you know, get the better of him, and he started sh sh pew-pewing in the woods to scare off whatever was, was wandering around, but you know, of course it was nothing. He was just freaking himself out. Once again, he tried to muster the strength to pull the trap apart and get his leg out, but he just, he couldn't. He was so malnourished and weak and old that he, he could not. Buster removed his hands from the trap and let himself lay backwards. He tried to blend in with the tall grass and stay as quiet as he could in spite of the raging injury. He kept ready and listened to the darkness, despite knowing that he would be at the mercy of whatever came of it. After nearly three days of camouflaging in with the brush and scanning the parts of the valley below in his line of vision for any sign of human life, Buster was completely depleted. Dehydration had dried him out and the hunger within had begun to swell to an insatiable heights. He lay there in days worth of his own filth, with rashes beginning to sprout up and feeling fatigued and sick and tired. He continued to lay there. Forgot to mention that dangling above the bear trap to lure the bears in was a decomposing beaver's carcass that had been like soaked in bacon fat to really add to the smell. Now this beaver carcass had been around for quite some time and maggots had begun to spew from the flesh. Three days worth of hunger, if not longer for poor Buster Rye had been gnawing at his malnourished frame. He decided that there was nothing else for him to snack on besides this oozing flesh from the beaver dangling above him. So he swallowed his pride and began gnawing at it. He dug his fingers into the maggoty fur. Very vulgar and disgusting descriptions of what the soured, rotting uh, flesh tastes like, as well as the... Mm, the worms, and uh, <laughs> despite the gag-worthy visual, he slurped up the plethora of insects like a mouthful of lengthy pasta. Mm-hmm. Yes. <coughs> As he chewed down repeatedly on the vivacious storms of chaos swirling in his mouth, he examined the freshly exposed meat. It was rife with maggots energetically stirring about in the holes they buried themselves inside. I'm going to skip past this part with for the for those of you with a weak stomach. Oh, this is a great description. He was gazing upon a honeycomb of horror. I like that. So Buster had passed out yet again from exhaustion and all that with you know, fluids dried up on his face and he was snoring happily away. Well, there's a reason there's a bear trap in the woods, because a black bear had wandered to the end of the scent trail. It had been lured to the smell of decomposition and the promise of meats. But it was disappointed to see Buster Rye laying there, snoring happily away, hunger at a fever pitch within the black bear. We have come to our next image, 
by the way. So I'm going to show you. It's gross. Three, two, one. Here's the picture. Yay. Look at that. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> Oh joy, so the bear immediately lunged for his face, um, pulling off his jaw just like art, and then ripping his uh, lower jaw right off. That's quite gross. Buster's tongue somehow remained in place and flailed in a bizarre fashion like the most horrifying human tornado. <laughs> As the bear had then moved on to tearing up the rest of his face and cranium and all that. Buster was still aware enough to try to protect himself from the bear's next attack. She stepped on his chest and went for his face again. You ever see the revenant? Well, this is worse. He tried to defend himself by putting his arm up and, you know, that was just another thing for her to grab on. This description of the bear attack, you remember Laws of the Skies, right? The very last scene of the Laws of the Skies. This is it. Pretty much, but with a bear, not a boar. So the, the finishing blow was the bear ran off with Buster's mangled arm. Um, moving on, uh, after that scene, Flint Oakley had been walking for hours before he finally stepped out of the thick forest into the clearing. He'd been in search for his missing niece for days. Ever since his sister came with word that she'd never returned back from her surprise trip to see him, even though it wasn't his fault, he somehow felt responsible. He knew there was probably a small window until she'd been lost forever. Flint had been praying in his mind for days to find her, but to that point, he hadn't found a damn thing. What he saw next wasn't what he hoped to stumble upon, but nonetheless, he'd have to decide how to deal with it. A man, or what was left of him, looked like a meat grinder had had his way with him. The destroyed body was torn to ribbons and one of his calves was still remained wedged in the cruel trap that wasn't designed for his kind. Oh shit, he's alive. So Flint knelt down to Buster and he's like, Mister, are you alive or can you see me? Cause he noticed some like little bit of twitching in the muscle. And then without warning, Buster like sprang up and like tried to communicate to him. Oh shit, Mister, you scared the hell out of me. What happened to you? Oh wait, that's a silly question. <laughs> You've been attacked by something. Uh. Oh, your head's bleeding. I gotta stop the bleeding. You're bleeding everywhere. I gotta stop all the bleeding. Uh, uh, I don't have any cloth to help you. Oh, your bag. Your bag. Uh, I I'm gonna get your bag to see if you got anything in there I can help you. Of course, Buster can't communicate. So Mr. Flint Oakley ran over to the satchel to start looking through and he stopped. I also forgot to mention that before Buster Rye left Mary Beth in his shack, uh, he tore a little necklace that said to my love and shoved it in his bag and flint found that necklace flint lifted up a small silver heart-shaped necklace with the inscription to my loved etched in cursive upon it immediately he rushed over to buster's flailing body where did you get this where's mary beth but he realized quickly that even if buster wanted to say anything he couldn't he wasn't going to get a response that he wanted so Flint Oakley began to pace around, trying to figure out what to do. He found his niece's necklace. What happened to her? I don't know anything. Unless. There was no telling who this mystery man was. Couldn't communicate to him, so he raised his own rifle at the man's face. Seeing that Buster was nodding and welcoming death, clearly. Hmm. Just as I thought. That would be too easy, wouldn't it? Killing you would be too easy, wouldn't it? Mary Beth's gone, I know she is. She disappeared almost a week ago now. And you have something personal that I gave her. Something she loved so much that she wouldn't... She wouldn't give up. Unless she had no choice. Killing you right now would be too much of a favor. Flint turned around and slowly walked away from Buster's destroyed frame. When he got to the edge of the woods, he looked back at him one last time. I'm sure that whatever started in on you would eventually make its way back here. That's the thing about hunger. It never does go away for too long now, does it? And that is it for the hunger. On to the next one.